Without further ado, let's go to the one, the only, as is now tradition on Tuesdays, Judge Andrew Napolitano. Judge, how are you today, sir? I'm fine, Joey. How are you? Sorry about uh, the government roadways and bridges collapsing. And by the way, I've heard many a story because, again, my uh, grandfather, who I see every weekend, he's from Newark. He's from New Jersey, where he grew up. And uh, he's told me many a time about highway stories and just getting around your neck of the woods. He's right. It happens all the time around here. Yeah, well, and let's hope that uh, they get it fixed real quick. Uh, now, there's plenty to get to today. Uh, and one thing I want to start with is your opinion piece from last week, because it's not often in the news these days what you covered. This goes back to the torture regime under the George W. Bush uh, administration and that whole era of the war on terror. And this is now the torture, which it is torture, is backfiring on the government. What's the story here? Well, the column is called Torture Comes Home to Roost because the torture is coming back to visit the government in ways it never uh, expected. Uh, it happened in two cases last week, uh, both at Guantanamo Bay. A guy named Al Nashiri, who is probably the mastermind uh, of the attack on the USS Cole, uh, that's a ship in the Middle East that was uh, attacked, 17 sailors killed, hundreds uh, injured, uh, was tortured uh, in Poland, in Thailand, uh, in Afghanistan, and in Guantanamo Bay, all by CIA agents at the end of the torture. I won't go through what they did to him, but it was horrific at the end of right of the torture the torture team which was the same in each place said the guy's telling the truth he's saying the same thing under torture as he said before and after torture now that renders everything he said not usable so if somebody's under torture and says i did it and then they stop the torture and they ask the person again did you do it and he says i did it neither statement is admissible in an american court because torture cannot be used to influence in any way any testimony in an american court it's almost as if george w bush and his torturers and his legal advisors didn't know it the most powerful evidence there is that this guy blew up the uss cole is his own words and none of his own words can be used they could have been used before the torture but now they cannot be used after the torture is there enough to uh convict him it's close uh without being able to use his words this is the first time uh that the government has suffered a setback like this it's not the first torture case at all but it's the first time that a military judge has told military and civilian prosecutors you can't use anything that came out of this fellow's mouth because of what you did to him same week the government decides it cannot try the case of Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. Khalid Sheikh Mohammed, he is supposedly the mastermind of 9 11. Well, first right. they said it was Osama bin Laden. Then they said they killed him. Who knows if he's dead? Then they said they threw his body into the ocean. Who knows if they did that? Now they say the mastermind is Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. There's a lot of evidence of his guilt, but he was tortured uh, 183 times. Um, he didn't make any statements incriminating him, so this is not a case of an uh, of an illicitly uh, used confession. He just served notice that he's going to, at his trial, call the torturers as witnesses to describe what they did to him. This creates a problem for lawyers. Lawyers in American courts cannot defend torture. They risk losing their licenses. So the prosecutors, who are civilian and military, have said to the Department of Defense, we got to enter into a plea bargain, plea bargain. So instead of, listen, I'm an opponent of the death penalty, but from the death penalty perspective, somebody who murdered 3,000 people is a most appropriate candidate for it. No longer. The death penalty will be off the table, as will solitary confinement in florence colorado 250 feet below the surface of the earth be off the table in return for his guilty plea in return for there being no trial the president has apparently approved this it's not joe biden's fault just happened on his watch that the schedule that the trial uh was uh was scheduled 
So Khalid Sheikh Mohammed avoids the death penalty uh, and avoids a punitive uh, confinement because the government tortured him. Uh, I'm not sure the first name of Al Nashiri may avoid conviction because the wow. government tortured him. Well, and just so the audience isn't confused, and we don't have to, and I don't want to go into the dirty details, but with Nashiri, like, this isn't just the arguments that were being had over waterboarding, which I think is also torture if it's involuntary. It's one thing for people training to go through that voluntarily so they're ever in a bad situation. They can handle it, but it, this is beyond waterboarding. In the one case, no, uh, no, the guy blew no. the, the coal. It was almost like Machiavelli with the uh, strip. Correct. Correct. Sorry. They hung him by his arms with his arms uh, secured uh, behind uh, his back, uh, coming as right. close as they could at pulling the arms out of their shoulder sockets. Uh, they ra raped right. him with a water hose. I mean, you don't want me to get it uh, too detailed right. uh, into this. How right. do we know this? Well, they actually made a mistake. Um, the CIA had the habit of filming the torture with the torturers masks on uh, and keeping no uh, other records so if the victim pointed to an individual in a courtroom years later there was plausible uh, deniability because you couldn't see the face and there were no records for some reason the torture of al nashiri the videotapes were destroyed but the detailed records were kept instead and the records were filled with a scrupulous or excruciating, however you want to call it, detail. The records were written by Gina Haspel, CIA agent nicknamed by her colleagues, not her victims, her colleagues, Bloody Gina. Donald Trump appointed her the director of the CIA. She's now in retirement. She wrote these detailed uh, reports of the uh, torture uh, of Al Nashiri all of which were admitted into evidence and then were corroborated. Mashiri's lawyers in the suppression hearing called the psychologist, the government psychologist who crafted the torture and had him testify in Mashiri's defense as to what the torturers did to him. I mean, this couldn't possibly be uh, any worse. All of it is because of the Bush-Cheney torture regime uh, which was crafted by people who would have flunked Criminal Law 101. And just to underline the point, folks, because of this torture, now the folks that we likely think did these heinous acts are not going to be brought to justice, or at least that now is a big possibility. And it's just a, it's a crime they're shame. Not gonna, they're not going to get the death penalty, even though if the government is telling the truth, one of them murdered 17 sailors and the other murdered 3,000 uh, civilians. Oh, man. Now, again, folks, we're talking to Judge Andrew Napolitano. You can always go to judgenab.com, though it's under construction right now, but you can always go to judgenab.com and also just check out Judging Freedom, Judge Napolitano's podcast, uh, wherever podcasts are available. I tend to watch on YouTube. And you had a great roundtable on your YouTube uh, version of your podcast with, I mean, many great characters that are reoccurring guests on your show. But y'all are, you know, kicking around the question who killed Yevgeny Prigozhin? So who did? Well, I, I don't have an answer uh, to that. One theory is that he he lost a, an internal battle inside the uh, Wagner group. Another theory is it was President uh, Putin's orders. Another theory is it was people under President Putin who didn't get orders from him to do this, but assumed that this is what uh, he wanted uh, done. So we really don't know, and and we may never know. They may find a patsy to take the fall, or they may not uh, prosecute anybody. Uh, but the point is, the guy who uh, concocted a short-lived and obviously unsuccessful mutiny uh, against President Putin, which uh, humiliated him internationally, which uh, President Putin solved uh, peacefully, it's now gone. Putin pardoned, pardoned everyone else in the military uh, in the mutiny. Uh, the mutiny uh, took down two Russian uh, vehicles, uh, fixed wing aircraft and a helicopter, uh, and killed 12 Russian um, uh, pilots. So, you know, you had Russian military fighting Russian military on Russian territory 
all of this in a 25,000 person march toward uh, Moscow, it's hard to believe that he wasn't uh, arrested and prosecuted for treason. But uh, obviously, you know, you never know what's going to come out in a trial. This this uh, saves the trial for someone who acknowledged what he did and was destined for execution somehow, some way. Well, and I appreciated Scott Ritter's point that, I mean, everybody like Nikki Haley jumping the gun saying Putin murdered this guy. I wonder if Nikki Haley had been so upset if Prigozhin had somehow m- murdered Putin, but that's another question for another day. But Ritter was saying that, okay, even, you know, let's assume it wasn't Putin, it's very clear that Prigozhin lost Putin's protection. And in that part of the world, that's a very important thing, sadly. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, it is, absolutely. Look, the, the Wagner fighting force, according to Ritter, is the most professional, most effective fighting force in the world. And I'm comparing it to American Special Forces, uh, Navy, uh, SEALs, British uh, Special Forces, even Russian Special Forces. It's quasi-civilian, uh, quasi soldier of fortune, uh, quasi-military, but they operate on their own standards. The military supplies them uh, with equipment. They do their own thing, but they are loosely uh, under the uh, Russian uh, chain of command. Uh, They are ruthless uh, as uh, soldiers, but they do their job, they get it done, and they get out. Well, I'd I'd want to see that matchup because, but you know, I've I've seen a lot of these reports on Wagner or Wagner, whatever you call, want to call them, and um, yeah, they do seem uh, proficient, to put it mildly. And uh, we're running out of time here, so I'm looking at these trials for Donald Trump. These trials begin on March the fourth, March the twenty fourth, May the twenty fourth. Uh, not only, and I'd love to hear your opinion on this, is this a landmine for Donald Trump in the middle of trying to run for president again? I think this is a train wreck for millions of voters. Like, how do you make this decision, uh, you know, in the middle of all these trials? Dave, it's a very good question. I, I really don't know how you make the decision in the middle of the trials. The most important primary is Super Tuesday, which is March 5th, uh, because of the number of states that are holding primaries on the same day. The trial starts on March 4th. Now, trial starts means that's when preliminary matters, including jury selection, which will take a long time, uh, are resolved. You're not going to hear a testimony. You're certainly not going to get a verdict uh, in time for those people uh, to vote. Uh, But the judge's position is Donald Trump is entitled to the same courtesy as any defendant, no more, no less. Now, that's a bit oxymoronic, courtesy to a criminal defendant. They don't get too much courtesy, but... Her point is she's not going to treat him any differently because he's the former president and because he's running for office. A lot of people think she should. That would mean that there were two standards uh, for justice. So the the normal length of time between indictment and trial in in that federal district of Washington, D.C. is seven months. She extended it to uh, nine months. Trump wanted two and a half years because he wanted it into what he expects will be his second term. Uh, But it looks as though that will be the first um, trial, and it looks as though uh, that trial uh, will will start on March 4th. Uh, The evidence against him is is very strong, very strong, and it comes from people uh, that are formerly in his inner circle. So calling this a minefield is an adequate and accurate description. So do you, you think they, they mined the field too much when she got that mugshot? I was saying last week, thank you, Fonny, thank you, Fanny Willis, for this great icon that is now going to be not only hilarious memes, but I think it, it's one thing to see you know Trump's being arraigned, Trump's being arrested. But when you see that mugshot, that picture speaks a lot more than all these news reports. Well, again, there there are two battles going on here. There's the PR slash political battle on one side, and there's right. the battle in the courtroom on the other. Uh, Trump is a gifted master at the former. Uh, in the latter, he will be in an area alien, utterly alien to him, where he'll be under oath and, and subject to the orders of a person he uh, despises, but who has near absolute control over him uh, in that courtroom. Often what he'll say politically will harm him in the courtroom. And it's the job of his lawyers to monitor what he says to the extent, listen, I know him. He's my personal friend. I don't think he can be monitored. Uh, 
but but he runs the risk of impairing cases against him that are already very strong against him. Oh, well, we'll see how it all plays out. I mean, I keep telling the audience that I have no clue. It's very opaque future, which is in one way exciting, also um, a bit ominous in other ways. Uh, with Judging Freedom, what do you got coming up today this week? Well, we just did an unbelievable interview, which we just posted with Patrick Lancaster. He's the American uh, freelance uh, journalist who goes where mainstream uh, media won't go. Uh, and he was speaking to us in part from a trench hole, uh, in part from the basement of a home, uh, 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 in what Ukraine says is Ukraine and Russia says uh, is Russia. Uh, and the essence of what he's saying is, is that the mainstream media has it wrong. Uh, Russia will soon triumph. The uh, Ukrainian military exists only because of the Western weapons that arrive, but they are outnumbered, outmanned, outgunned, uh, and destined to lose. On top of that, we have Scott Ritter at 2 o'clock Eastern today, Phil Giraldi at 3 o'clock Eastern today, and Larry Johnson at 4 o'clock Eastern today with a very interesting question. Why do retired four-star generals keep getting it wrong? We have clips from General Petraeus, General Hodges, and General Milley, who on Friday will be retired, uh, getting it totally, totally, utterly, and completely wrong. We have Petraeus saying the Russian military is crumbling, for which there is zero evidence. Uh, well, that is must watch must listen excuse me folks and uh y'all check it out today judging freedom and as always judge uh, i appreciate your time pleasure joey all the best until next tuesday yes sir